look at these people moving. Okay, <laughs> what do we do? What do we do with them? So we start training them, they're moving around. If anybody's worked with this population, they're not so good with proprioception. <laughs> uh, they're not totally sure why. One theory could be we just have so many ranges to deal with, that's a lot to map in our brains. The other is actually just that the collagen, the fiber endings of collagen don't match so, so well with nerve endings and the messaging is a little funky. So those are two of the theories. They really have no idea, but those are two theories of why our proprioception is not so great. So my client here on the right, <laughs> She, her head is forward because she was saying, I feel like Quasimodo. She felt like she was, she literally felt like she was like this. And, I'm, and obviously, this is what I usually do. I just take a picture of them. I'm like, hello, hi, this is what you look like. They're like, really? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so if you are there, cameras are great. If you're not, mirrors are good initially, but ideally what you want, they, you want them to own the, own the positioning without having to cheat with a mirror, okay? Um, but it, initially, no, totally have them use, because they will sit there and go, I'm so far forward. And like, no, you're obviously straight. Um, so using mirrors, again, initially, but cameras are great. Um, eyes closed also, as long as like there's no any sort of balance issues that are going on. Eyes closed just turns us more into our proprioception. Yeah. Do you use stuff like cars with people? Like just like the regular simulation of yeah, I mean, level and they're running, like, yeah, I mean, better mapping of the yeah, exactly, because it maps the joint, and so I'll have them have them do some of that. Um, some of my folks who are super symptomatic, it's they just they're just scared to kind of <laughs> move stuff initially. So I work a little bit with more isometrics initially, and I just sure. like don't move stuff, stuff well, a whole thing lot with your with your the um, pain tolerance thing too. Like, there's that other end of it of the glorification of I'm, I'm so pain tolerant, so like that. This is a badge, and you're like, well. In some in a lot of cases, you'd be like, I want you to be able to tell when you're out of one. Yes. And like, yeah. Your yeah. be telling you something. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, the people that have no pain, pain is, is good. It's beneficial. It keeps us alive. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who have no, there's the, those genetic yeah, anomalies of people who don't feel pain. Mm -hmm. They actually die usually pretty young mm -hmm. uh, because they have like their foot is like falling <laughs> off and they're like, what did you do? Did you Just bless you. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so they don't live very long. Unfortunately, so no pain is very helpful. It's very useful. Very useful tool that we have. It just gets uh, hijacked um, So references just give them a ton of references. I just don't give them any option of where to go <laughs> Like, Go to that that uh, go to that bench. You're gonna be your legs are Actually initially what I'll do is that's a band uh, Elastic band, but initially I'll probably have a yoga belt. That's just it's that's a strict mm -hmm. end point Bam push into that yoga belt um, that doesn't even give them any option. Like the less options, the better in the beginning because they just have no idea where the world they're going. Especially with something as complex as a squat. I mean, a squat is a very complex movement. Um, but if I load them, the load kind of hopefully <laughs> gets them to uh, initiate that, that front side, that anterior portion. Boom, they're locked in here. And now just go to that box. They're like, oh, okay, I can do that. They, they'll do a perfect squat. I don't have to cue at all. I just put them in all those things and I don't cue, just go to the box. That's all, that's, that's my only cue. Because um, they don't understand, like even some of, we've talked about Jen, like how if you say like, oh, move this in the body, or you know, a, a yoga teacher, we know she was like, bring your spine together. I'm like, spine, like nothing to me. Your cues are crazy in yoga. I'm like, ah, and they're usually talking to hypermobile, so I was like, yeah, they need to change this a little bit. So uh, references are huge. Tell them to go towards things. Go towards a wall. Push into a tube. To not within their body. Or like feel in your glute. Or feel here. Feel it's no, it's not gonna work. Uh, split key kicky. And again, if you're gonna have them in big long planks or anything like that, just be mindful of lung levers. A lot of times, some folks again, if they're high functioning, that's fine. But. Uh, like in this one of those positions, some some of the time my knee just feels like it's gonna slide off um, in some sort of plank position. It just depends on again where they're laxity. Maybe they have super lax shoulder, maybe their ankle, just depending. So you know your client, just be mindful when you put them in those long lever positions, any exercises that are long levers. The other very common stuff with this is you'll see us hypermobile. Oh God, I love to stretch, we love to stretch. 
we're constantly getting this feeling of stretch. Oh God, my God, I'm so tight. And I had my one client initially, she just, she had to, she came and she, oh, I just have to stretch first, stretch first. Usually not a, not a thing of, that, that they need to stretch. I mean, yes, they are, well, they're needing to stretch because they usually have instability in their joints. So their hips, shoulders, usually that's the area that is possibly it is unstable, possibly it's just a message being sent from the brain that it's unstable. It might be fine, but it's, that's the message they're getting. Is it, is it maybe more just so they can actually feel it? Right, if you're in this block, they can feel it, but it's more yeah. so they'll have this laxity. Then what happens? What do we do if this feels like it's falling off? My lat goes, I can help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your lat turns on and like oh, tries to do. You get these long levered muscles, your rack fem, your hamstrings. They start to try to hold on, but then they also try to stabilize. So they're holding on for dear life, and then they get tight and they, they're being used a lot more than they should be. They're big power muscles, you know, for stabilizing, mm -hmm. right? So instead of, clicky, clicky. Um, hey. So instead of, kitties, we love kitties. Um, <laughs> so instead of wanting stretching all the time, you want to get some strength and stability, okay? So, and you're gonna do that kicky kicky by doing the unsexy exercises, okay? They're not fun and exciting, but a lot of times I'll sort of, I might work some of these in between sets, like as I'm moving on with someone um, in between sets, or just as I'll put it in a warm up somehow. Um, but yeah, it's all the non-sexy, those clamshell exercises. Are they functional? No, no, they're not at all. There's, it's more just to say hello to the area, liven it up. I might just have somebody, if they're really disconnected, if you just have them stand here, if like do this 18 times, like, oh, there's a muscle, I think I feel it. Like I'll get people on the ground and you just have, can you squeeze your glute muscles? Nope. <laughs> like, you get some pretty deconditioned people, they're completely disconnected from their bodies, okay? And with this population, if you are working with, right, these are all in pretty neutral, sort of boring positions. But right, if you have a shoulder, so this has been a neutral position, right? But with these guys, whatever funky, crazy position they're gonna be in, in their contortion or acrobatic work, you gotta, hopefully they should have some external rotation in the crazy positions that they're gonna be. Do they have strength in those big positions? So start here, but then you gotta move up if they are doing that sort of thing. Um, they choose to be in those crazy jobs. <laughs> Uh, I have this, this is more of a, it was a yoga teacher training, I have this slide. I guess they call it micro-bending when you come into this, right? It's a little bit contentious, right? We can all say that, per physics, if I go past neutral, I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time creating co-contraction. If I come out of it a little bit, I'm gonna have more mechanical advantage to contract both my tricep and bicep, and hence I will have more, more uh, control and stability in that joint. Yes, we can all say that is true, yes, <laughs> right? Okay, um, but these guys go past neutral. So, right in, in the FR sort of population, they say if you have it, control it, right? Control yourself, right? <laughs> um, and it's, we just don't know, right now we just don't have, there's not research, there was like one article, I was trying to find it, I couldn't even pull it up on PubMed, it was a reference in another article. <laughs> of looking up retired acrobats and gymnasts. Like, yeah, what happens when you're 40, 50, 60 years old, when you've been jamming through and going in these end ranges all the time, right? Practices like jujitsu, wow, those go way past. You get pulled into all those crazy positions. Great, is it great for this population? We can't say, you know? I mean, they feel fine and they wanna do that, then yeah, they should probably try to create a bicep contraction way and they're extended. And I don't have a huge amount. You'll see that like it, their hand is down here. There's a huge amount of um, way past neutral in that elbow for some of these folks. So, um, you know, say, right, is it safe to work those end ranges um, when your end goes beyond neutral, right? And thoughts like this, yeah. Well, I, I feel like there's a difference between the elbow and the knee. And I only say that because the when you see people who tend to hyperextend at the knee joint, 
what it can do to the pelvis and how it affects the low back does seem to be an issue, at least in people I've worked with. For sure. Yeah. So. This is just looking at the elbow. Yeah. The knee is a whole other whole other thing that you can have a conversation about too. Yeah. That's most of my folks, I tell them all, right? I used to hang, cause you hang here yeah. and then we go into here. Yep. And if you have that <laughs> gymnastics background, you're into here. What do they do? <laughs> <laughs> this is your ballerina, right? <laughs> this is your gymnast. They're a little bit more, <laughs> <laughs> right? They're a little more muscle bound, right? But they have, they have this positioning, you know? It's like they just, the ballerinas, they sway and they're totally turned out. Um, and they usually lock out into that extension in that knee. Is it great on, no, they're not using any muscle. Cause they're like, oh, it's too tired, I'm too tired. I've just been training for eight hours doing ballet. Um, so they're tired. Um, it takes a little more energy. I had a friend who just kept coming around, just locking, just unlocking my knee all the time. It got me real quick to not standing in this position cause it just, I just go into here. So I have a huge amount of anterior tilt, and that's, that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. uh, most hypermobiles, they tend to be in this position because um, it's uh, But that pain, that's actually painful for me to stand like that right anymore. So I don't stand like that anymore. I try to use my muscles. It's a good thing. Um, yeah, so the knee is definitely another, the other joint that is, it goes way past. Um, but in jujitsu, like well, and you're constantly loading on it too. Is the other thing, yes, yeah. as well the effect. Sure. You're not walking in your hands that often. Because you know, like, do you find if you have a gumby person in jujitsu, do they like, do they tap out when they go way past, or they're still waiting for sensation? So like it can be kind of squirrely. To yeah. it's hard to tap, harder to tap people like that because you have to get it. Like there's they have just more range to escape, like stuff yeah. like before they feel any anything that feels bad. Um, yeah. They can squirm out of stuff more. Yeah, so and you can, you can still take it a little bit, you know, and you can take it into their passive range, right? Because yes. you're doing an external force on it. So yeah. like, they're yeah. going to be fine still. They still don't feel anything. And there may not even be any damage. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. Secure them differently. Right. <laughs> yeah. they just take so down. <laughs> like, shit, you should be done. Shit, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, next slide. Okay, so training concepts. So now you're kind of getting them working. In terms of looking at a little bit more of, okay, I'm gonna have an eccentric phase, an isometric phase, and a concentric phase. So he'll sort of uh, concentrate for maybe a month or so on each of the different components of the movement, okay? He starts with eccentric with this population. I wouldn't really start with eccentric. You wanna kind of more start on an isometric phase. Because um, it's just, say, actually, go to the next slide. We'll no no joint shear. Sure. Yep. We'll just go straight to it. What's that? I'm just saying no joint shear and then you Yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then down there it is. Um, <laughs> you can tell that it's all happening all the time. Um, so yeah, so the isometrics, you start it because it's no shearing, it's analgesic, which is good. We're trying to get them out of pain. Um, you can see Jill Cook, a lot of, so on the top, on the bottom here, you can see Jill Cook and Keith Barr. The other one is Ebony Rio. I don't know if you can raise it up a little bit so they can get the, because uh, her name is a little. <laughs> um, so Ebony Rio, the two are Australians. They've done a ton of research on tendons and collagen and all that kind of good stuff. Um, she found, right, even 45 minutes later of just doing some, uh, some like leg extension isometrics, 45 minutes later, they still had analgesic effects on the knee. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, that's a good, good thing for these guys. Safely moves it, reduces inhibition of movement because there's some cortical activity that just makes it like, oh yeah, okay, it's okay now. Um, so that's ISOs I usually start with because it's just, especially when you have people coming to you in a catastrophic state. You have pretty high functioning and they're doing well. That's not where I'm gonna start. I'm probably still gonna put it in part of their programs because it is, it's really helpful for this population because we have trouble getting ten tension, creating tension. Uh, next slide. Then, so then there's eccentrics and resist, I find you can do eccentrics just general like so eccentric stuff, right, of loading like that. But this resistant stretching, I really like for this population. It really taps into to the proprioception of the joint. Um, and they can just be like, oh my god, okay, there's, there's my leg, there's my hip flexor. Um, it can be very, very helpful. And also just talking to, the, a lot of times if people can't get that glute or turn it on at all, you just do a little bit of the, the eccentrics resistant stretching on that glute, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, I got it. And they might even be able to feel it in a dynamic movement like this. 
lot of times that takes a while to get that feel in that groove. So you're going to get them in the basic clamshell, right, which is that you just tell people to get that, that shoulder. No, I have them back where they were. Um, <laughs> so the, the foot in line with the hip and with the shoulder. Um, and just one practitioner of this, he likes, he likes to fatigue the area out initially. Mm. I'm sure he has some sort of physiological. I like isometric first. Like just like holding it. Yeah, like yeah. Holding and it, right, it's, it's whatever. I tend to actually whatever works for that person's body, right? Some people really? isometric. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> what works for them? That's a good motto to go by. Okay, so you're just going to, I'm going to hold these down. You're going to push into my hand in here and just come up to about right there. That's good. And bring it back down. Push up. And we're going to go doing pretty, great. Doing pretty great. high volume. <laughs> And then ideally, right, you ask them what they're feeling, not do you feel your glute, because you want to. <laughs> do you feel any I'm kind of unsure about my future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel it right died. there. Great. Right. 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 What did and you so, mean by high volume? Uh, so I would say, like, he can go to, like, 10 or something, right? So sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, two or three. Uh, if they're not feeling it, I like to, again, just any sort of sensory <laughs> um, in the area, yeah, right? Um, and then tell them, like, okay, this is where I want you to feel it. All those feedbacks, That's right? Fine. They're all feeding the brain, right? Okay? So it's all that feedback. Okay, keep going. So you were you're feeling it, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, okay, perfect. Now, you're going to stop here. You're going to push into my hand. You're going to match my pressure, so we're not trying to, like, blow me out of the water here. Okay, so match my pressure, and we're going to go down. Do a little tug of war, but let me win. So let me win. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. Push. And I should be eccentric. Uh-huh. Right? So yep. you're contracting as we're lengthening the tissue. And this, it, with the glute, it never seems like you're lengthening the tissue. We all know it's lengthening that glute. So we've already been working this glute, so then you can just, you don't have to do the concentric from here. You can just continue with the eccentric. So we're gonna keep that leg up here. Same thing, match my pressure, push into my hands. And we're just going down. You would usually stand like this, but my knee, I banged it up last week, so it's not feeling that great. You just need the block. <laughs> so push out of here. Win or are we matching? Letting, letting me win, okay. but good. And he's really good, right, again, we're all movement people, so he's doing nice light. What you'll have people do is they'll, <laughs> they go 100%. There's like 100 and nothing. They have nothing in between. We're wanting to get you know, maybe 20%. It's not blowing stuff out, right? Match my pressure too is a nice setting. Yeah. I like that. Match right? my pressure. Yeah. Feeling that? Yeah. Yeah, nice. And you'll also see sometimes they kind of jerk. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> Again, that's when ISOs are hugely helpful. So if they're super jerky, then I do the ISOs and it all, right? We know from the FR type of stuff, right? Do it, go 15 to 20 degrees, push 15 to 20 degrees because you know in an ISO, you are gaining strength 15 to 20 degrees on each side, right? Um, and pushing down. So I think it's kind of cool when it's jerky in a way too because you, you know, like we know it'll smooth out and you can be like, hey, there's a clear demonstration, you're having better yes. communication. Yes, a lot of times that works like a charm. Yeah. You just do the ice. I'm like, oh, no, 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 okay, just push, 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 push. Now go again. Oh, oh there we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just they didn't have it mapped. They didn't have control of it, right? So uh, pair up and uh, let's see how that goes. Yeah. Oh, this is how hard it's pushing. I'm doing with my client because it made sense. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear a lot of pushing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's not functional. There's no jig going for it. There's a time and extra time and place for every exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, way different. All right. Because I was using my, my big old thighs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. There you go. Oh, now I have a question. Right, now go as hard as you got. Go as you got. Go as strong as you got. Okay. I know, right? Okay. Dorsey flexors, E verters are going to help out. Yeah. That was good stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a clean line, right? Right there. Right, if your this position helps. 
you're lengthening that tissue a little bit more right here. Mm -hmm. So he'll get a little bit more length if he stays down. If he stays in here, he's already, that's just an exercise in itself, turning. You feel that, like, but you just hold your leg, you're getting an extra stretch right there. That's going to be a little bit more TFL, a little bit. So like this, yeah. Don't let me leave you. See what you need to have. Right there, you lose it. Yeah, yeah. That's like more of that reflection. Wait, did I do this over here? Stem and gum. See what you want to do? No, we didn't do that one. Don't let me leave you. Start with the first few of that, like. You do it like all of the full series. As a full series, yeah. So you'd go clamshell, then this guy. If you wanted to do that one, you can do that one. Also, is this one? You can try it. Yeah, and then you do that one. I feel it. Block here. Turn, right. You're going to turn here. You're going to push into my hand. Oh, right. So I'm resisting. Diagonal. So, <laughs> try to keep that external rotation. Again, don't muscle me through it. There you go. Good. Back up. That's really nice. Yeah. What I also try to watch when I'm doing stuff like this is like how quickly does the pelvis come? Right. We'll try the other side. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, on you. Right on. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 So it And then, and then and the hip feels so like it. it doesn't even have it, right? Yeah, uh -huh. so different. Yeah. Alright. Something's happening. You're doing a really good job maintaining more leg though. Yeah. Thanks. So it's really tricky to find that association between pelvis and that frontal plane play right there, but you're doing a good job here. There's a couple more really good. And locking the hip, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let you press down. I'm going to let you press down. Sure, sure, yeah. Because they like to resist me more. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? You want to have a new one? I really, I really, I really, I really, I want him to do it. It does feel like I like to do it. It's terrible. Whoa. We're doing conditioning. Go with me down. I'll go to you. That's it. Does that mean that you never straighten it? Want to straighten it? Yeah. With me, with me, with me. On my left and right. That's right. That's for sure. This is it. On this side. The long one. So I get a long load. They've got a lot of range, right? So, um, so this is the type of thing. Like this is almost along the lines of cars, type of thing, right? With the arm, but with this population, it's going to be a little different, right? They can do a 180 sweep. So the first one I think that foot was on the, I was just sort of on with contact with the board. This one. No contact with the board, try to get that control. Can you control that leg? Now, lift offs, right? Same thing that they do with the cars, right? Lift off, that type of stuff. But it's just, you gotta go beyond <laughs> with range with these guys. Um, you gotta work in the, in the um, it's all your end range. It's a range, yeah, in the ranges that they have, right? Um, go to the next. This is just more end range, right? I had a, um, just a slide, slide boards are great for these guys, but just, you saw I was on a railing, just go down to what, right, I can do the full split, but I only in that, in that picture just went about down to here, pulled it back, because that's where my strength was. I only had strength out to here. I didn't have the strength all the way out there, right? So like, what would he say? He would say, do you have this book of this? You need to get some strength out there, right? If, um, Right, my knees are all janked up right now, but um, if you, right, having my legs out straight in that position, that's hard. So if you don't have it, fine, start here. Maybe just go here, right? Mm -hmm. Just shorten the lever. Mm -hmm. Do you have strength here? Can you hold, right? Can I hold an ISO, push here, right? You can also do the, eccentric stuff, eccentric stretching, um, with that type of maneuver as well. Um, let's do that one. I 
I just have this just in terms of when you're training with these guys, really with anybody. You're going to have a whole nice plan. They're going to come in. He hurts today. The gnome. Yes. Stupid little gnome came in today. My knee hurts today, but what are you trying to do? We're gonna have some hope. We gotta keep you going in the right direction, right? I don't care. Fine. Work isometrics here. Work end end range knee stuff. Can you move your knee in a, for a, a hamstring? Let's work on your hamstrings. Let's work on calves. Let's do some stuff with some core. Still giving them something to do. Giving them some agency. Giving them the feeling of that they still did something. So they still leave and go. Yeah, no, we did a good workout. That was good. That was awesome. So you're just again, right? Progress is never in a straight line, but you can progress. And that nice little hill doesn't look like a big hill, but it's still a nice good hill. Um, <laughs> no, love this video. Um, so next slide is <laughs> a little guy. Um, it's actually 72 pounds right there. That he's so pulling. <laughs> he was probably about so like 50 pounds at the time. Um, with these guys, we eventually want to get them to where we can get some strength training. Strength training is so, so, so protect protective, and it just well, makes them strong, right? <laughs> when is strength a bad thing? Mm, you know. Um, it's really, really protective. It just and it just physically makes them stronger, and then hence makes them hopefully uh, emotionally stronger, right? Mentally stronger. Um, spotting carefully with that BP effect. With the well, actually with those isometrics, just be careful mm -hmm. because our BP, especially I, I find with deadlifts. Um, I sometimes like hit the ground after doing a deadlift. I just know I, I'm like, okay, sign the shit down here for a second. Um, and that basically just happens with so much. We we do, you um, sort of create an occlusion of blood, and then you release it. The blood dumps down, right? And then so you gotta wait for that venous return. Um, another area actually that pools with blood, right? We all ate. You know, we all have five six liters of blood, but it is you know. Right now in my muscles, it's barely there, six to seven percent. There's huge shunting of blood that we have to do all the time. It's, it's like incredible the way that we move around our blood. Um, but a big reservoir, we could have our whole blood volume in our mesentery vas vasculature, so in our gut. Mm. Our whole blood volume can sit here. A lot of blood goes here. So actually working core, you can work core. You can you know pump the, sometimes I'll just go like this to try to bring blood up to my, back up to my head, using that skeletal muscle pump. Use all the things that you can to try to bring that, bring that BP back up. So just spotting, careful. Um, with these guys, with training and weight training, your programs, I find minimal effective dosage because you're dealing with all that fatigue um, and their nervous system, sometimes it's just, it's sort of a lot on their central nervous system um, that's already sort of taxed. So a lot of times I'll maybe, it starts with one time a week, Let's try, try it out one time a week. Let's see what that does. Now let's put another second time a week in there. Twice a week of strength training, you can still get pretty darn strong, even just doing twice a week. And they can be fine. And the rest of the time, hopefully trying to use getting some aerobic activity in there because aerobic activity is also analgesic. Again, pain reliever, okay? Um, uh, so again, lifting considerations. If you have somebody, don't start with plyometrics, all this, like the swings. Burpees. Basic stuff, right? <laughs> don't start with this stuff. Okay. There's a physical therapist in New York. They, they don't ever do conventional deadlifts or back squats uh, just because risk for reward. It's just hard. I mean, conventional deadlift, it can be hard for a lot of people. Uh, so just using the, the hex bar, uh, using kettlebells. That's just, we all know what a kettlebell deadlift looks like. That's what the video is. I have to request these every single time. So, um, so just, and it's just nice going slow. I find the kettlebell deadlifts are really nice. Um, and it also, again, we, we don't hold tension very well. The, that deadlift just feels really nice even just holding it. You mm. just sit there and hold. Because mm -hmm. um, it's sort of, it's just this, they can feel tension. They very rarely feel tension. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, that back squat versus front squat again. We all kind of know this, but this picture just shows it so um, perfectly of the, this is a group that already, their hip stuff, they, a lot of them have anterior hip issues. That's a huge amount of flexion in that hip, right? They already have FAI, a lot of this femoacetabular impingement on this front side. So going into that much, you're just banging into the shin. Like, let's not do that. Um, under load. 
In that second picture, you can see what is his rib cage? Where are his ribs? Now, this one on the left, <laughs> his ribs are all the way out here. What does that do for here? His whole front side, you know, just falling out. There's no control. You can see his rib, uh, the ab outline, right on that on that left, uh, right. Sorry, your right hand side. Rib outline, ribs in, <sighs> and then the the load on the front is going to keep him up and down. He's not going to dump forward. So if he dumps forward all the way, he's going to go forward. Okay. So front squats I find are just hugely, hugely more beneficial for this population. It's just easy. I don't have to cue a lot of stuff in a front squat. Um, so using all those other zercher, hip loaded, leg press, right? They're great. Front squats always look crazy to me on the wrists and fingers. So I yeah, actually I do. I actually don't like that position. I don't like going to this. Mm. I actually, so there's this guy. Yeah. I've actually found this new one because I have so much wrist issues come up all randomly, like mm -hmm. my little wandering gnome. Um, and I go here. And then I actually kind of pull on the bar, so I'm creating tension, which feels nice. This can, again, anything front loaded. It's like the bar's right under your throat. Huh? The bar's right under your throat. And it actually doesn't do what this one sometimes I feel like really goes to the throat, and people mm -hmm. don't like that. This one I really like because it just it sort of keeps it just shy of your throat. Um, and I feel confident doing this. I'm not going insane weight. Like yeah. if you were going, I don't know, above 100 pounds, I don't know if that would feel sure. great. Um, but with my folks. You can I'm use just, lifting straps. On yeah. The, on the floor. yeah. So the lifting yeah. straps, yeah, mm -hmm. too, for sure. Um, but any sort of front squat, yeah. But I totally agree with you in that and the yeah. wrist for the front squat. But yeah, you also very few people can do that. I mean, that's the thing. This population can because they have so much laxity. Yeah. They're usually fine with going into this position. Mm -hmm. I just don't love it. I mean, that's so. I mean, you also listed such a squat as well. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, if you have girls, um, <laughs> they it's it's not as Comfy. Um, mm -hmm. It can still work. I just kind of try to pull it a little lower. Um, if you have someone with a shorter humerus and well endowed, or it's not a good combo. Um, <laughs> same with double double kettlebell. Um, yeah, a lot of more fussy people on the double kettlebells. Just that's <laughs> mm -hmm. so fun. Um, so yeah, but the zercher is a great way, and it's just the load is the closer we all know, the closer you have it to the center of mass. All that it just feels so much easier because yeah. we don't have to control all the things, <laughs> right? We have to control a lot more ranges. Uh, is this the uh, This is just this, this is just this hip loaded. I really like, um, and you, you guys know, you guys have all seen this with when you put it around the, the belt, belt, the belt, and you just have the chain and then have the weight hanging. Yeah, it's a little silly. Feels a little silly. Um, but it feels, you can maybe try to request the access and see if it, it comes up as I'm talking. Um, so one that I was talking about before, that, that belt literally just cradles their hip and that compression can feel really good on, this pe on these people. It's like a yoga sling or the inversion sling. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. Right. Hmm? The tricep grip belt is all. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Do you want to share? Are you sure you want to share? Why don't you share? Do you want to share? Someone wants to share. Oh, cool. And I was doing down up actually with this. So I was I hanging at the bottom. If you've ever done those, those are evil too. Um, where you sort of, where you have the bar low. Have you done these? Hmm? Where the bar sits low and you have to come up from the ground. Oh, bottoms up. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was doing a little bit of hanging there for a little bit. But just that. And this, I have this up actually kind of high that day, I don't know why, but I usually like to have it actually sort of cradling the hip a little bit more. Um, some bits of belts fit differently too. So yes, yeah. Some belts are better about Yeah, I have one at home, it's a little bit better. Um, so that one's great. K-Box, if you guys, you don't, mm -hmm. you don't need the oh, yeah. video that's K-Box is great. K-Box is great, but these, um, like, I want to say elephant bar, I don't know why. Earthquake bar. <laughs> that's great. The earthquake bars are great. But you don't need the fancy bar. You can literally just buy a bloody dowel from your local store and just, I mean, the bamboo, yeah, it's nice. It bends a little bit, but it's really not needed. Um, you can literally just buy, buy a dowel, put some tape on it, and hang some shit from it. You can also just hang stuff from a regular bar. 
Um, but this amount of, and you can all, if you haven't tried it, um, this is a little bit, I would have wanted this band to be a little bit, um, but having this pervation of movement, you can't, you can't ever relax in doing this. So it's the whole time you're having to have tension. And we really <laughs> suck at doing that. <laughs> um, we like to cheat. We're super good at cheating. Um, we're like magicians in terms of we'll pass all these tests and we'll, oh, we look beautiful in movement and we can do all these mm -hmm. things. But we're half the time we're just like hanging on tendons and like. <laughs> Um, the K box, real quick. What just can you explain that? I've never heard of that. So, oh. it's supposed to be eccentric. Okay. It's a it's a flywheel. Okay. So the flywheel's in the middle. You pull on it. The flywheel, the just the force, the what centripetal force, centripetal force, is creates. It's not very much weight, but the force of the of the like centri centrifugal force creates quite a bit of force. So you pull it up, and then it. It comes back, back at you and uh, pulls okay. back down. Eccentric. Got it. So uh, that's force. the eccentric okay. part of it. But I, mm -hmm. in practice, it's super easy to cheat. Oh my right. gosh, right. so easy. Mm -hmm. So I can pull up, and then I can basically kind of get free. Yeah. Because I'm really good at cheating. <laughs> right. I get free to about down time. here, and then I maybe have to hold on. Um, mm -hmm. You can make it really hard, but you have to. You can have to put the effort to make it really hard. <laughs> um, it can be super phenom phenomenal if you do put in all the work. You you die after about ten reps. Like, you you've tried it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just I was like the yeah. small range stuff that you can't cheat. The I was dying. Like I'm just <laughs> holding here because it missed a random range of motion. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like yeah. this <laughs> and it just pulls you just pulls you straight back down. Like, <laughs> it's a pretty intense force. <laughs> so. Um, in fact, they say it's eccentric. I'm like, eh, I, don't, I don't quite know how they're getting that. You can that. gain it for sure. You can totally, yeah. Yeah, that's what I found. There's a yeah. super cat, too. Is it similar like, to that? It's got very specialized machines. Right. Yeah. Cool. yeah. But they'll have in like right. one gym in Topeka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or in New York. Yeah. Uh, Devin Garcia yeah. in New York has it. Just other stuff to, to consider. They can go to a nutritionist, hopefully maybe who has some stuff that Kevin Barr actually has some, he had some new research out that was talking about 15 grams of collagen eaten an hour before. He did six minutes of jump rope, which I'm like, none of my clients can do six minutes of jump rope. Yeah. I didn't know if he did like a minute on, minute off. I need to look at the actual, uh, the actual article, the journal article. But he found that it actually helped build better than with no collagen around in the system. So for this population, I actually want to try it myself because that research just came out. Um, I, don't know, I think it is now published. Uh, but it's seen all apart to see income contaminants, which is for energy and the food of and the microgene you saw before. They go to dysautonomia clinic. That's part of their um, uh, being diagnosed with other families. It's horrible if anyone knows what a table tilt test is. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Awful. <laughs> It's playing with that blood pressure, um, so that they have, we basically, it's called dysautonomia. The low BP is part of a dysautonomic state. Uh, basically, all of your autonomic nervous system, pupil dilation, heat tolerance, blood pressure. Um, so yeah. some of your stuff might even be a dysautonomic the type of thing, yeah. heat intolerance. Yeah. Any sort of autonomic, autonomic yeah. nervous system stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. all dysautonomia. <laughs> But the table felt yeah, they just basically have you go blue, 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 blue. <laughs> until you pass out <laughs> and or throw up. What? So it's really bad. Oh, yeah, you're uh, so confused <laughs> because your perception is oh. missing. Uh, and yeah. if, they, if your folks have fatigue issues, definitely, definitely have them get a sleep hygiene because they also sleep apnea is another one of the uh, symptoms. Mm. Um, and sleep apnea just has huge uh, health factors that can happen. Right, Alzheimer's is a connection with with uh, disrupted sleep. Not clean sweeping our brain every night. Uh, not getting that deep sleep, and they can they can feel as if they've had a normal sleep. That's a, uh, good to understand as well. They can be like, "No, I slept fine." Because you can have people who they've slept fine. They if they do a sleep study, they're like, "You woke up 150 times." There's arousals yeah. and awakenings yeah. that people have, and they don't even know that they've had them. I've heard of sleep apnea stuff though, like like you're not doing anything asleep that you're not doing awake so if you start tracking like the way you're like how often you're not breathing during the day you'll find a tremendous amount of that stuff too and then you have more opportunity to train like, a lot of people they can if it's not 
extreme sleep apnea, you can, a lot of breath work during the day can sometimes clear up sleep apnea mm -hmm. at night. But in an extreme case, it's, they're still gonna have it, may need a CPAP, um, that continuous positive airway pressure mm -hmm. machine. Uh, the CPAP is important. For that population. So we basically want to get some. That some was her. What? Right? <laughs> yeah, wants to be Princess Buttercup. Yeah, it was awesome. It was I didn't really That's Queen Buttercup. Buttercup. I actually got this picture, and the it was the Women's March, and what was that? Two, three years ago. Uh, and they had they had like you know <laughs> they had two thousand. This was supposedly you know she was two thousand sixteen. When was the stupid election? Yeah. And this <laughs> she was, this is after Trump. She's like fuck no, <laughs> right? Um, so this, we need to arm them up, and so they're durable for the long haul. We, we are living for a better long time now. Uh -huh. Way past our first day. So. Yeah. Yeah.